The final days of leg seven of the Volvo Ocean Race, five teams still racing. Mafre with a repaired mainsail have two main goals. The first is to finish, which is dependent on their sail patch holding. The second is to limit the points Dongfeng Race Team will gain over them on this leg. Turn the tide on plastic are their nearest competitor. De Kafari's boat has been sailing slow due to mast damage and now are held up in the high pressure, hoping to break free before the Spanish arrive. Next is Team Axe Nobel. Out of the high pressure, but running out of miles to the finish to overtake the boats ahead, Dongfeng Race Team and Team Brunel. These two are only 12 miles apart, both desperate to grab the bonus point for winning this double points leg, but pushing hard for the win carries some big risks. The front runners are due to finish in 36 hours' time, and with good winds driving Team Brunel and Dongfeng Race Team home, it looks set to be close. We are fighting for the first place with Brunel. But uh, we don't have to forget that the boat is tired, the people are tired and uh, the biggest mistake we could do was uh, would be to push too much to try to win this leg and uh, break something especially tomorrow in the strong wind. So we have to find a good balance and uh, try to come back but uh, sail safe for the boat and for the people. I noticed it when I wanted to light the fire for my uh, dinner that the water was squirting out from the cover plate of the, of the keel box which has uh, water inside it because the top of the keel comes uh, through, through the hole. There was a mess of plastic around the top and I, came saw off, it, I saw it in the endoscope and it came off but it must have something must have jammed up in the drain. Well, let's, let's do a back down first huh? and then you can always jump in. Are you myself ready? Yeah. This is the swimmer of the watch bag. It's got um, a yeah, manual life jacket, some flippers, snorkel mask, a rope, everything you'd need to go for a little swim. Hopefully clear the keel, looks like we've got a bit of an issue with it. And the wet box. Um, meaning water's coming on board. So um, yeah, I'll just jump in for a quick swim and see what we can find. What gear you got? So you need dry suit, flippers. Manual life jacket, obviously. Yeah. And we can't actually sail, keep sailing because it's not taking the water out. Otherwise, we'd end up with a lot of water in the hole. And we're just going to tilt the boat fully on its side now. And um, and just lower him over the side so he's attached to the boat at all times. All right, so I'm going to go down here, pull my sails down to the keel, and then. Uh, much underwater is it? Ah, uh, it's not bad, I need to meter. Okay. Alrighty, lower me down. Keep on to swim in the right. Sailing with this for a while now, yeah. full speed. So, um, so just went down, checked the keel. Um, there's two um, cover plates for the keel box, the wet box. And the front half of our port ones just snapped off completely. So there's a gaping hole about that big in the, so in the bottom of our boat. It should be all sealed here, but um, yeah, our seals are broken on the internal hatch that holds the pet water out. So. We're going to have to come up with a way to sail the boat that's not going to push water inside the boat because that'll be a bit of a major. Today we sang the boat pretty hard, the J-Zero. Uh, had some bit of slamming. 
and probably uh, because of the big speeds and some of the slamming we broke part of the um, cover plate of the keel. And that's probably blown the seal out a bit more which has created a leak. Exactly. And the seal probably was working okay and moving. Probably the, the thing that you felt, that was the plate breaking off. Oh, that was plastic hanging uh, okay. Yes, that's why I'm. That's why I was checking in with you. What do you reckon that if we just strengthen that plate, you know, with some battens and and maybe even 5200 the plate down, would the uh, would that be a, a smart move or would that just create another problem? Yeah, we broke in half of one of the side plates, so now we just need to strengthen, I guess, the top plate on top of the of the, of the keel, so the water is not going to come into the boat. No, we don't know. We just suddenly water was filling in at a massive pace and uh, blew out the seal around the wet box lid. And then we went down on the, in the halyard to have a look, and then we could see the yeah, it was missing half the plate. Now we need to keep an eye on it and um, and uh, basically make uh, maybe some reinforcements to uh, just to be uh, safe enough to arrive in Italy and keep the boat sailing on 100%. Exciting moment, Dick. And replace that. Or we could just cut, just cut it there and do it, eh? Yeah. yeah. I mean, exactly. you have to put a short bit on because that I've done it before. Not so much of a repair, but more of a reinforcement. We had a little here last night. We sealed it because uh, the, because of the pressure inside the seal was blown out in between the uh, bolts and uh, to reseal it so it's all going breathing for the ventilation pipe again and uh, we reinforced uh, just in case the whole cover plate I think we're gonna do today uh, 22 25 knots of boat speed again the, the lid hopefully doesn't have too much bent or flex in it. So uh, I think this will bring us to ETJ uh, safely and otherwise we'll, uh, I'll have to sit on top of it. Yesterday afternoon um, we were sailing along in about 30 knots of breeze. Um, reasonable sea state, but uh, nothing out of hand, and uh, it was a loud bang, and the rig broke just above the first spreader. Um, then, obviously, in uh, to make the boat safe, we had to cut the rig away, and uh, luckily, we were only 100 miles from uh, from the Falkland Islands. So now here we are in uh, in Stanley Harbour uh, with the boat all in good shape. We we're lucky to cut the rig away, not damage the boat, but obviously. There's, there's no mast left in the boat anymore, so... Is everybody in a safe place back now? Now we're working on our next moves to get the boat uh, up to Brazil safely and uh, ready for the next leg. Um, at the moment, obviously, we're, we're looking at all the options and doing everything we can to uh, to get back in the race as soon as possible. Yeah, the ideal situation is we're, we're back racing in the next leg. We're obviously absolutely devastated that uh, our comeback attempt on the podium has, uh, has not worked out this time, but, uh, you know... What we all really, really want is to be uh, on the start line in Brazil and uh, fighting hard to be the first boat into Newport. We're now looking at options for seeing how much fuel we can get in the boat so we can uh, get the boat up the coast and also uh, options for a jury rig. Um, obviously any uh, any trip we undertake we've got to make sure we do in a, in a seaman like fashion and safely and uh, you know not put us in any more risk so uh, really we're, yeah, we're looking at all the options and all the, all the contingencies just to make sure we can get from from here to the next stop uh, as, as safely as quickly as possible. No, the, the guys are doing great, you know. Our team has been been through a lot in the last few months and uh, it's great to see everyone still smiling and still holding strong. You know, we've, we've just done 12 days in uh, in, uh, in conditions where it's really as hard as it gets in the Southern Ocean and uh, yeah, and 
to be dealing with this, having been looking so strong in the leg, is, is devastating. But uh, you know, I couldn't be more proud of uh, how the crew are holding up and uh, how positive they are, and uh, you know how keen we all are to get back in the race. So uh, let's hope for the best. in the South Atlantic, uh, the conditions are just uh, heinous as you say, the water is still cold and uh, it's tight reaching so a lot of water comes over the deck. I think uh, some of the people thought yesterday was actually the coldest day of sailing. Yeah, I think two, three hundred miles further north the water is like bearable, 12, 13 degrees and it will make a huge difference. Uh, yeah, J2 had a, a hole in it um, from an original repair that we did uh, last week. So we've had like a six hour repair job to fix it and it's now back up in the air and fingers crossed it will get us to the finish. Well the final outlook for the leg looks actually uh, to be happening in the last uh, 150, 200 miles what we've seen uh, very often before. For the last 200 miles uh, it will be game on and we will see some big separations as well west east so it will be interesting. I think it would be amazing to win this leg, it, especially uh, we haven't had a sterling performance so far in the race, so to win would be um, exceptional and I think we've sailed this leg particularly well. Um, equally, just uh, we've had a really hard leg from weather conditions, so just praying that nothing goes wrong with the boat between now and the finish. We got the mainsail back up 24 hours ago, just over 30 hours ago now. Um, so we did a couple of days with no main. Main's staying in one piece. We're not we're not sheeting it on too hard, and the wind's not been too uh, not been too strong. So uh, I would say we're at 95%. But well, we we provisioned for this leg for 19 days, and we're going to be we're going to be just over 20. Well, unfortunately, in the Southern Ocean, we got a bit stuck into some of the snacks from later in from, from later in the leg. So basically, we're uh, yeah we're running out. We're going to be all right, but we haven't got huge amounts of food to get us through the coming days. I think we'll be all right on freeze-dried, um, but snacks will run out of, so I think there's going to be a few uh, hungry people when we get to uh, Brazil. It's Easter Sunday. And if we're good boys and girls, we'll get Easter eggs. But what we want most is a working rig on starboard. That's what all we want for Easter. New rules of the boat. Cannot sail on starboard. Only allowed on port. Sort of like a one-legged duck. Just going round and circles. We can't sail with the full main. We can't sail with any masthead sails. We can't slam into any waves. We can't say the F-bomb on deck because someone might think that we've just broken the mast. Yeah, and we've, we, well, we have actually never run out of poo bags, so we've got the outside toilet, which is good. We want to try and pull the spreader back, so I'll be up there with a the spanner, and then we just count one, two, and on two, someone bounces it, and while I try and do the spanner, do it, save it for someone biggish. Are you happy to take on that responsibility? Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to break. <laughs> <laughs> Gave it a bit of a test. And we have a grand total of one quarter turn uh, and a few F words. I think we need to do about 10 turns, so that's 40, to 40 quarters to go. So we're going to be here a while. One little baby step at a time.
One, two! Oh. I'd like to see them argue that we haven't. They'll obviously be concerned because it's come out once. Nice job. Now that's an Easter chick if ever I saw one. <sighs> Bloody good day, yes. This spanner is going into the wall of fame. Or as Lukey would say, it's going straight to the pool room. It's pretty good. Um, it's been a stressful couple of days trying to figure out how to fix it. And um, we just went up and persevered. And at the beginning, I didn't think it was going to go because it wasn't moving. And then it moved like a tiny fraction of a, of a turn. And, and we had to modify a spanner. And then I was scared the spanner was going to break. and. Once it, we got a few turns on, forcing it, it, it got quite soft and we managed to wind it all the way in. The rig is good. The rig is good. Easter. It's a miracle. Moment of truth. We're about to jive onto starboard. So, um, two days ago, we didn't think this was going to be possible. Now we're starboard jive. We're full main. We're about to go mastered. And that means we could wiggle out this high pressure. And the race is back on. Lance's words were go for your life. Well, the battle for the lead of leg seven has come down to Bauer Beckings Team Brunel and Charles Cordrelia's Dong Fong Race Team. These two have 200 miles between them and third place. In 24 hours, the finish line in Itajaye will be crossed. Now, emotionally, the fleet, everybody at the Volvo Ocean Race and the sailing community as a holder has had to come to terms with the loss of Sun Hunkai Scallywag crew member John Fisher. And the miles racing and the relentless conditions in the Southern Ocean have taken their toll on both the sailors and boats. And this leg is sure to go down in history as one of the toughest legs of the past editions. But the race and our teams continue to drive themselves onwards. Team Brunel and Dongfong race team have been jostling for the lead, sometimes coming down to just three miles. And with the finish line coming up in 24 hours, we know it is going to be very close between those two. Behind them, it's the Dutch team, Team Axenabel in third place and looking very comfortable. A big gap behind them and turn the tide on plastic. Then the overall race leaders, Mafre, are trying to find their way past Di Kafari. Now those are the boats racing. Vestas Alemithar Racing have retired and are in the Falkland Islands after dismasting a few days ago. And Sun Hunkai Scallywag, after that, that incident in the Southern Ocean, they are making their way to the Chilean coast. So leg seven has seen a little bit of everything and now we look set to have a very much a nail biting finish. Just before coming on air, we caught up with the onboard reporter, Martin Carusare, onboard Dongfong race team to get a lowdown on what the racing was like and what options they had in store. Uh, yeah, this night it was uh, quite intense. So the plan was for sure to, to come back on Brunel, but uh, yeah, we got like maximum 30 knots of, of wind. But we have to, to manage the boat because the boat is really tired, the people are tired, so Charles decided to, 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 to attack, but not too much. Just at the moment, uh, I know they, we can see Brunel, 
and uh, they are really just on the leeward side, so everything is possible. There is still uh, more than 24 hours of race, I guess, so keep fighting. And how tight is this battle with Brunel? I mean, by what we've been seeing here in race control, the miles have been ticking down. It's getting very, very, very tight. It came closer and closer, so I hope uh, tomorrow we'll be, we will be first and uh, they will be behind the red boat. So. But uh, yeah, in, in this condition, we have to take care because it, everything can happen. You, have, you can do a mistake during a peeling or put the, the wrong sail at the, right, at the wrong moment. So. You have to, to keep uh, concentrate and stay focused until the, until the arrival, even more when it's really strong wind like this. Well, you mentioned the boat was tired and the crew were tired. Have there been any issues or, fingers crossed, everything good so far? No, everything is good, but uh, <laughs> there is some, like, uh, some new noise you, 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 you didn't see the, the, the last week. So, uh, not just small detail, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a boat and it's a mechanic, so... Uh, it's uh, like a car, after, after a long miles, uh, yeah, there is little damage, but no, no, uh, hopefully there is no big problem, so we can, we, the boat is still uh, sailing fast as it can, so it's, no, it's good. And you can see uh, every, everybody is really, really exhausted now, and uh, so, so, yeah, they have to take care more. Do you know who it is that's on deck at the moment getting hosed down by the waves? Which sailors are up there? Alors, Charles is grinding, if I remember. Uh, Elming, it's uh, Jackson Botel. And then we have Marie Ryu and uh, Jeremy Bayou. Well, Jeremy is uh, driving, maybe. And then we have Jack and Marie. And just one last question. We know that it's close at the moment between you and Team Brunel. We know that we're getting near to the finish line. Weather-wise, it still looks a little bit light off the coast. How are the crew feeling? They are confident, you know, they... Brunel, Brunel have done a pretty good day, so if we have a chance to pass them, for sure we will, we will, do, we will, we will do, do, do it. But uh, no, we are, we have nothing to lose. There is a huge gap between the, the third on the on us, so we we will try everything we can to to finish in the first uh, first place. But we have nothing to lose. 